Yesterday, I posted a video on TikTok and Instagram about programmatic search engine optimization. And I got these comments. You idiot, programmatic SEO doesn't work anymore. It was crushed by the helpful content update. It doesn't work. You're going to get a penalty. It's against the rules. And there were some people who were like, it does work. But there were, there were people who were hating hard on programmatic search engine optimization. And at the same time, there is a thread trending on the SEO subreddit saying, why are people here hating on programmatic SEO so much? Because people on the SEO subreddit hate on it a lot. Is programmatic search engine optimization dead? Do you know what programmatic search engine optimization is? If you don't, this is a quick definition and, a, and an example. Programmatic SEO is using automation through code, variables, and databases to create large numbers of optimized pages at scale to target long tail keywords and improve search engine visibility. That sounds like a mouthful. Here's an example that will make it a lot easier to understand. Okay, a travel site creates thousands of location-based specific pages, like hotels in Paris, hotels in Rome, hotels in Berlin, and each page is generated using a template and data. And the data, it's like hotel listings or city information. So you have this data, it's combined with a template, and then it spits out all of these pages that rank for specific searches like best hotels in Paris. That's an example, an easy example of programmatic search engine optimization, very basic example. But a lot of people have been doing this with AI, where huge amounts of the template are actually filled in with AI-generated text. And it's not a website's own proprietary data. AI is just filling it in. So now you have an example. You have a recipe website that wants to rank for thousands of keywords like high-protein breakfast for runners, low-carb vegan dinner for two, quick gluten-free snacks for kids. And instead of manually writing each page, the site uses AI to generate content dynamically based on the keyword plus structured data. So if they do have their own data, if they have any of their own data, they'll use that. But a lot of the time, the AI will just put in its own information and then fill SEO optimized templates with this AI written content. And then you scale it up to thousands of pages automatically. So an example would be forward slash, this is the name of an article, high protein breakfast for runners. And it's an AI generated recipe AI generated intro paragraph and FAQs, all tailored to this specific keyword. So that's how AI comes into play. Your basic normal programmatic search engine op optimization is you have your own data and you have your template and you combine those and then you make SEO pages. And then AI programmatic SEO is you combine AI into it to make either custom images, you see that a lot, AI generated custom images for each page, unique images, and AI-generated text for each page. So somebody asked on the SEO subreddit, why are people here hating on programmatic SEO so much? This person cited Zapier as an example. Zapier does programmatic SEO perfectly and gets away with it. I feel like people can't differentiate between thoughtful programmatic SEO and spammy AI-generated slop programmatic SEO. So a few things to break down here. Zapier right now, actually is ranking better than it's ever ranked before. And you can Google things like Google Sheets to Instagram. I think I Googled, I actually Googled Google Sheets to Instagram and a Zapier programmatic SEO Zapier page came up, connect Google Sheets and Instagram for business to unlock the power of automation. I did the same thing with Excel and Google Forms and got another one of these programmatic SEO pages. All these programmatic SEO pages from Zapier, they look the same, but they, have, they explain different functionality that Zapier can do. So Zapier can connect Microsoft Excel and Google Forms, and it gives a page generated programmatically. I actually think their videos are generated programmatically as well, showing how to connect these two platforms. So there was this template, it was filled out with Zapier's own data, and then there was a few other things. I think there, I think there were a few things that were manually written in this, like the FAQ. How can I automatically transfer data from Google Forms to Microsoft Excel? Can I update existing rows in Excel through Google Form submissions? I would bet that a good amount of this was, was human written. I'm going to check right now and I'm going to see if this is detected as AI writing. Oh my gosh, it is detected as AI writing. Okay, so Zapier might actually be combining AI with their existing templates. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. So basically, it looks like Zapier added in this FAQ section 
they have an, uh, but you know, Zapier does a lot with AI, so they're very good at it. And so they have, they have an AI trained on, on their own functionality. And then that AI fills in the FAQ for each of these programmatic SEO pages. That's so funny. But I wouldn't be, okay, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a level of human reviewing going on. But anyway, that, so now you have an example of a real life example from the search engine results pages of a company that is doing programmatic SEO well. And now, you know, previously to using AI, it, it, it was just still ranking for all of these pages and it was doing it well before and it's doing it well now. It's now it's incorporated artificial intelligence, generative AI into it. So a comment on this thread is thoughtful programmatic SEO has been a thing for years. We just call it SEO all the time. The name programmatic SEO was recently popularized by get rich quick hustlers and coaches. So there is a lot of negativity around that term. 90% of the time when people talk about programmatic SEO, they are describing spam, specifically what Google calls scaled content abuse. And I'll get into scaled content abuse in a moment. But the original poster on this thread said, is Zapier scaled content abuse? And the person who wrote this said, I did not check every single URL, but from what I have seen, no. Zapier actually provides value to users with each URL and shows exactly the type of content you would expect. There is also no SEO slop content on the pages. This is Google's scaled content abuse policy from a Google Search Central documentation. This is what it, what it reads. Scaled content abuse is when many pages are generated for the primary purpose of manipulating search rankings and not helping users. This abusive practice is typically focused on creating large amounts of unoriginal content that provides little to no value to users no matter how it's created. Examples of scaled content abuse include, but are not limited to, using generative AI tools or other similar tools to generate many pages without adding value for users, scraping feeds, search results, or other content to generate many pages, including through automated transformations like synonymizing, translating, or other ob obfuscation techniques where little value, again, where little value is provided to users, stitching or combining content from different web pages without adding value, creating multiple sites with the intent of hiding the scaled nature of the content, creating many pages where the content makes little to no sense to a reader but contains search keywords. Personally, I think a lot of people who are saying programmatic SEO doesn't work anymore, they are getting, or that you'll get a, pen, a penalty for doing it, they are getting hung up on the minutia of this definition and overlooking the fact that this definition explicitly says it is fine if the content helps users. It says at the top, manipulating search rankings and not helping users. And it reiterates it in the middle where little value is provided to users. If you are doing programmatic SEO or AI programmatic SEO, but the pages are actually good, it's fine. The issue is so many people in all, in all types of work are sloppy, are sloppy with their work. So few people proofread or, or put the resources towards human editing, trying to make a nice site, nice UI, UX. So few people are willing to do that. And so what you get is you really get AI slop where the, where the AI hallucinates and actually searchers land on a page that is giving them bad information, but it's using a programmatic SEO template. It's, I think it's less likely to give bad information if it's combining a site's own proprietary data with AI generated text, because then at least you're getting some proprietary data there. Just like, for example, Zapier is doing. And Zapier have, has enough resources and they rely on SEO a lot. They're probably proofreading these pages. And Zapier is crushing with, with SEO right now. In fact, they're getting 9.2 million clicks a month from Google. And that's an estimate. That's probably a lot more. It's probably three, four, five times that, maybe more. But yeah, lots of people are sloppy. Let's see what else this Reddit thread says. Another popular comment was people can't differ. So this is quoting the original poster. People can't differentiate between thoughtful programmatic SEO and spammy AI generated slop, which is what the original poster wrote. And then, so this person says, so what is the difference? It's splitting hairs in my opinion. Programmatic SEO is done by generating bulk pages, targeting thousands of phrases. Chances are pretty good large scale users of this use AI to generate that slop. So what is the difference? Again, this person is missing the actual definition from Google, where Google is like, it's fine if it helps users, if it helps searchers. So somebody commented and said, you can use programmatic data to create value. 
e.g. integrating APIs or analyzing multiple data sources to make it useful information. And you can have data, someone else said, you can have data that refreshes programmatically so the content stays up to date. Somebody else said, I do think there are a lot of people thinking they need to do programmatic SEO without having any idea of what it really is, and you see that all the time. The top comment for this post is actually very negative. It reads, what is thoughtful about programmatic SEO? Question mark. And then someone commented and said, you had to think of a prompt for the AI, and that's the thoughtful pro part. Programmatic SEO was called programmatic SEO before generative AI came along. I've been in search engine optimization now for well over a decade. Programmatic SEO was called programmatic SEO before generative AI was here. And actually, thoughtful programmatic SEO was killing. And it still kills. It still does very well. The problem comes when you put in AI and the AI is hallucinating and writing bad information. Or another problem comes when you just have lots of thin content pages. You're using programmatic SEO, but the pages are really thin. They're thin with, with little unique information, so they're not helpful. Or they're just bad pages altogether. The template is bad. Maybe the, maybe the data is good, but the template is bad. That's another common thing. Or, and, and this is a rare example, but sometimes you see companies doing programmatic SEO where nobody actually wants this data. No one's really searching for it, and they are killing their crawl budget they, they, because they're smaller companies. They don't have a lot of crawl budget or they don't have a lot of links, and they're killing their crawl budget from Google with all of these programmatic SEO landing pages. And so their really useful pages, their good pages, are not being crawled properly or indexed properly. And you see that too. The thing is, bad SEO sucks. And a lot of people, a lot of people really mostly see bad SEO. Or maybe they see a lot of good SEO, but they forget about it. And then they focus on the bad SEO because the negative things stick out in our minds. It's the same reason why negative hooks do better on TikTok and Instagram Reels than positive hooks. When you open with something negative, it just catches someone's eye, catches someone's ear way more. That's why I'm calling that's why I'm calling this episode of the podcast is programmatic SEO dead. And I'm not calling it programmatic SEO is not dead. That's why you see so many people saying SEO is, they, they just period say SEO is dead. And then they'll get into their video and say, no, it's not dead. But you know, this hooks better. It's the negative things. People focus on that. Somebody commented on this thread and said, because it's spam, programmatic SEO is spam. Somebody, I'm not even going to read this comment, but somebody left a comment that was just written by AI. And it sounded like it was written by AI and I tested and it was written by AI. That's AI slop. And then the other thing to mention, I'm done with this thread. The other thing to mention is there are plenty of companies that will get away with bad programmatic SEO for a while and then they get caught and then their sites are just completely ruined, ruined for years, or they make adjustments and they come back. But the overall conclusion to this is programmatic SEO is not dead. Not at all, but just like any other method in marketing, it can easily be done poorly and then have a lot of negative consequences. So the overall lesson is if you're going to do programmatic SEO or even programmatic SEO with AI, try to have your AI train off your own information. Don't use the AI too much. Review your pages, review the pages that are, that are getting created. It doesn't take that long to review a page. If you have any hesitation in your gut that a page which is being generated is not useful, just cut it. Don't worry about it. You're generating so many pages, just cut it. Play it safe. Be thoughtful with your SEO, and that's how you win. And that is all for episode 636 of my daily digital marketing show, 636 days in a row. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.